Welcome to Myositis 101 for Patients. My name is Rohit Agarwal and I'm a rheumatologist. Since this is my first video, let me first explain you what is Myositis 101 for Patients and why I'm doing this video series for you. Myositis 101 is a series of YouTube video where each week I will post a topic related to myositis. This is to increase the information and knowledge about myositis amongst patients. My simple reason to do this is to increase awareness of myositis in the world. As you know, the myositis information available online, on net or in print is very little. So my hope is through this series of these YouTube videos on the topics related to myositis, I will be able to promote or educate various patients around the world about what is myositis, how does it develop, what are different types of myositis and so on. Various questions that bothers our patient will be addressed through this, these YouTube videos. Through this Myositis 101 for patients, I'm hoping that many patients around the world would be able to ask questions and will be able to provide comments and feedback on various topics related to myositis. So today we will address the most basic question about myositis, which is what is myositis? Well, myositis is an autoimmune disease. Well, then the question is, what is autoimmune disease? Autoimmune disease are diseases where patients own immune system, their own self immune system, which is supposed to help them fight infections and bugs starts attacking their own different body parts. For example, rheumatoid arthritis is an autoimmune disease where immune system start attacking the joints. Similarly, myositis is an autoimmune disease where immune system gets overactive and start attacking patients own muscle and or skin and in some other patients other organ parts. In a very simple term, you can also think about myositis as myo which means muscle and itis means inflammation. So inflammation of the muscle. However, this simplistic terminology is rather confusing and uh, could be misleading because many times myositis patients have skin inflammation and in other cases could have lung, joint or other organ inflammation as well. So simply saying myositis as a muscle inflammation would be wrong in many cases. There are several different types of myositis that we need to understand. The four major types of myositis would be polymyositis, necrotizing myopathy, dermatomyositis and inclusion body myositis. Now there are several other types of myositis and also there are very various subtypes of each of these four major types of myositis. And then throughout this uh, video series, we will go over each and every topic one by one. But today we are only going to summarize things uh, briefly. So first polymyositis. Polymyositis would mean that it primarily affects the muscle and not so much the skin. And it can also affect other organs like lung, joints, um, GI system, heart, but primarily, most commonly, it will involve muscle. Uh, dermatomyositis would be a disease where it primarily involves skin, causes, causing skin rashes, as well as muscle, causing muscle weakness. Now, in this also, other organs can, could be involved, for example, lung, uh, arthritis, um, difficulty in swallowing, so GI system could be involved or heart could be involved in some rare cases. Third was necrotizing myopathy. Necrotizing myopathy is rather little different than polymyositis, similar but little different than polymyositis in which it primarily affects the muscle and not many other organ system that I told you about polymyositis and it also affects the muscle little differently as compared to polymyositis. In this, there is more muscle death or muscle necrosis that we say and patient develops severe weakness and very high level of muscle enzyme as compared to polymyositis. When we do biopsies of necrotizing myopathy muscle, we see there's not much of inflammation, but rather more of muscle death going on in the muscle biopsy. Whereas in case of polymyositis, it's primarily muscle inflammation that is leading to muscle weakness. Fourth is inclusion body myositis. Now this is a little different than polymyositis and necrotizing myopathy. In this also primarily muscle is involved. You can also have GI involvement where you can have difficulty in swallowing as a part of this inclusion body myositis. Inclusion body myositis is seen as more inflammation along with degeneration of the muscle sort of mixed together as if 
the two disease processes are going in the same disease of inclusion body myositis, inflammation along with degeneration of the muscle. As I said, there are several other types of myositis and various subtypes of the major categories of myositis we discussed. So I will briefly mention some other types of myositis and not going into any detail, but those will be covered more in future lectures. Those are patients with cancer associated myositis, juvenile myositis, patients with connective tissue disease associated myositis in which basically there's another autoimmune disease along with myositis. Then patients with antisynthetase syndrome could be thought, thought of as its own category of disease. Also patients with a myopathic dermatomyositis. Now this could be very confusing. Um, so I will, I will just mention it right now, these names and we'll go over more in detail in future. The most common organ involvement in myositis obviously is muscle closely followed by skin. Now there could also be other organ involvement. For example, patient can have involvement of their lungs or of their joints or difficulty in swallowing. So affecting their uh, swallowing apparatus and rarely and fortunately so it could also affect heart. It could also affect vascular system of the body as well. Note that not all patients have all of these organ involvement. Some patients have just muscle involvement. Some other patients could have muscle and skin involvement. And some patients could have more organ involvement, including muscle, skin, lung, joint, and other organ that I've mentioned before. So it depends on patient to patient. And not all patients have all organ involvement, most cases. One of the common symptoms in myositis includes muscle weakness. In this, patients may develop muscle weakness over the course of weeks or um, months in some cases. And these patients may have difficulty in getting in and out of chair, going up the stairs, or getting in and out of car, or uh, holding a gallon of milk in some cases. So these patients perceive a lot of muscle weakness and it's slowly progressive. So sometimes patient, it takes some time for patient to understand that they're getting weaker before they can seek medical care. And in some cases, not all, patients can also have muscle pain along with muscle weakness, along with significant fatigue. Other symptom of myositis include skin. So various skin rashes can happen. Common skin rashes happen on the back of the hand, which we call as gotten papule. Sometimes patients have rash on the upper chest here, which we call as V sign. Sometimes patients have rash on the upper back and the neck, which we call as shawl sign. Sometimes patients have rash on their elbows and the knees. Um, sometimes they have a rash on their face that we call as malar rash. And many patients can also have rash on their eyelid or swelling or redness around their eyelids called periorbital edema or heliotrope rash. Some patients may develop lung involvement. In that case, patients develop inflammation of their lung leading to shortness of breath and or cough. Many times physicians are not able to recognize that the patient has underlying autoimmune disease causing inflammation of their lung and they get misdiagnosed as pneumonia or other lung problem. Sometimes patients have joint involvement. Typically when patients have joint involvement, it leads to inflammation, which means swelling and tenderness of various joints of the body. Most commonly it affects multiple joints of the hand. So typically, both hands are involved and knuckles are typically involved leading to patients pain, tenderness and swelling on these joints where patients have difficulty in opening and closing their hands. They have pain in their hands, especially the pain is worse in the morning, uh, along with stiffness in the morning and so on. Sometimes the patient can have presentation of arthritis so severe that they can be misdiagnosed as rheumatoid arthritis when they present to their rheumatologist or their primary care doctor. Other time patients can have difficulty in swallowing where the patient's swallowing apparatus is affected because upper part of our swallowing apparatus is made up of muscle. So when there is a muscle inflammation, our swallowing apparatus can get weak. These patients would present with difficulty in swallowing generally the meat products as compared to the liquid products. Occasionally patients with myositis can have some vascular involvement where a symptom called Raynaud's phenomena can happen. 
Renaud's phenomena is a symptom where patients will develop discoloration of the tips of the finger, generally fingertips of the finger turning white, red or violet color on exposure to cold and it's reversible so it does get back to normal but when these repeated attack happen it becomes more of a symptom for a patients. Rarely patients with myositis can have their heart involved. When their heart is involved, it's generally due to the inflammation of the lining of the heart, of the muscle of the heart, or abnormality in the electric system of the heart. This can lead to symptoms including chest pain, shortness of breath, or palpitation in many cases. One of the common features of myositis we have not discussed so far, which basically is when patients get diagnosed initially, they can have fever, weight loss, significant fatigue, difficulty in their day-to-day -day life. And this is common in most patients when they first present to their physician for with the symptoms of myositis. Now, obviously, not all patients develop all of these symptoms. Some patients develop some set of symptoms and other patients would develop some other set of symptoms. Now, how do we know who's going to develop what symptoms? That generally is decided by what type of myositis the patient may have. And also another factor which your most of your physicians should check called myositis autoantibody. These myositis autoantibody is basically very simple blood test that can be detected in our body. And generally it helps us to decide what type or subtype of myositis we are dealing with and what could be the common organ involvement or problems we can see in that particular myositis type. So I hope that I've briefly explained you what is myositis. We will go over much more details of various things we have discussed today in our my future videos. This is my first video and I would like to thank my patients who have encouraged me to do this YouTube videos to provide information to various patients of myositis across the world. So this video is a tribute to my patients who have really taught me a lot about myositis. With that, Thank you very much. Please tune in next week because each week we will come up with one video of myositis on one topic. Next week we will cover who develops myositis. Thank you very much for watching.